Hello and welcome to your next project in C++ and today we're going to be discussing how to convert an, uh, an integer that someone types in into a Roman numeral but don't let that uh, frighten you or anything this is not that difficult so don't worry but anyways uh, well this isn't going to be necess the code I'm showing you isn't necessarily the most efficient uh, you know like when we learn about classes and arrays especially uh, there are alternatives for making it much more simpler but uh, uh, we're not going to go down that advanced. And and when you learn about arrays, you'll know how to change the code that I'm going to be presenting you with at that time. But I'm going to assume you don't know arrays and stuff like that, even though I already have those tutorials. All you need to know is, I believe, my second or third tutorial, which goes over arithmetic operators. I believe that's my third tutorial. My fifth tutorial, which is strings and string functions. And my ninth tutorial, which is on loops. So And probably my sixth tutorial, which is on if statements. So you're going to need to know all those. But other than that, that's we're good. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is, well, create three variables. So we're going to create a string called Roman. And this string class, don't forget to include it, will automatically initialize it as this, as, a, as a basically a null string. So don't worry. Uh, then just so you know, here's the these are the only Roman numerals I know. So it's I, V, X, L, C, D, M, and what they're equal to. So this is what we'll be dealing with. So we're going to assume that they type something in between 0 and 4,000, but we'll still have uh, an if statement to check that, you know, just in case. So we have string Roman. We'll have int integer, which will be equal to whatever they typed in. And then we'll have another integer called piece. And what this will do is check a piece of whatever they typed in as we go through our if statement. So that's all that will do, so don't worry. Then down here, uh, well, we're going to have to uh, actually get the information from them. Oh, we don't want an end line there. Uh, please type in an integer. And then we'll have a CN for integer. So that's good. And, well, now we have the integer. So now let's go through our if statements here. So the first if statement will check to see if they're within the boundaries. So if integer is greater than or equal to 4,000 or integer is less than or equal to 0, we're going to print this message. See out and uh, see out invalid integer and and line and that's it so let's click and save this and let's see what happens I type in you know 4000 we get invalid integer if I type in like negative 4 still invalid but if I type in let's say 5 uh, nothing goes wrong so that's that's really really good so now if it's not then we're gonna have an else statement if it's not in between those areas. So now that we have an else, we know at the very bottom we're going to want to print whatever they typed out. So we'll have Roman, uh, whoops, Roman numeral colon, and then right next to that we'll have uh, the string Roman pop out. So that's really, really good. So now that we've taken care of that, let's uh, actually mosey on down through this. So now as we go through the Roman numeral, so they typed in, you know, like 3, 4, 86, something like that. Uh, we're going to have to go through each of these numbers at a time and then determine what type of characters we're going to have to concatenate to our empty string Roman. So the very first one we're going to want to look at is the thousands place, and probably the easiest, because all we have to do is determine how many, uh, how many M's to tack on there. So if it's 1,000, just 1. If it's 2,002, if it's none, don't do any. So the very first thing we're going to actually do is check to make sure if, uh, where is it, integer, yeah, integer is greater than or equal to 1,000. So that basically means if it's at least 1,000, well, check to see what we have. So at that point, what we're going to do is set piece. So we're going to take piece, and then we're going to set that equal to and then we're going to take integer and divide it by 1,000. 
And what this will do is, won't give us how many thousands there are. But also remember, since it's an integer, not a double, it won't give us a weird number like 3.486. It'll just give us the three. And remember, integer division doesn't round. So they put like 3,700 in, you don't have to worry about piece rounding up to that four. So again, you don't, you don't have to worry about that or anything. So I think that was a four, oh well. So now piece will be equal to whatever's in the thousands place. So now what we can do is create a for loop. So we'll create, create an int i is equal to zero. And then while i is less than piece, because piece would be equal to how many thousands there are. So that's good. Uh, i plus plus. So while it's less than piece, we'll take Roman right here and concatenate the string m. And that's it. And remember, if integer was never greater than or equal to a thousand to begin with, it's never going to go in here anyway, so you never have to worry about it tacking on m's if there was nothing there. So, we can run this. If I type in, let's say, 2000, now we get Roman numeral and we have two m's. And if I type in, let's say, 800, there's Roman numeral, but nothing is there because it was not greater than a thousand. As you can see, it didn't round this eight. When uh, when it did this, well, actually, it never even went in there to begin with. So, but yeah, so that's really really cool. So, well, that's it for the thousands. So the next thing we need to do is to look at the hundreds, and this is where my arithmetic operators come in. Not so much the division or these comparison operators. I want you to remember the mod. Do you guys remember what the mod does? What that does is returns the remainder of, you know, whatever is being divided. It basically basically does division and returns whatever the remainder is. So if we did uh, this and we went mod a thousand, that would just give us the 286 that remains, right? And that's all we want to deal with. So uh, the very next if statement that we're going to have now, before we... Before we even get into this if statement, uh, notice how we have integers greater than or equal to a thousand. So regardless of what goes on in here, since we know that it's greater than or equal to a thousand, what we're going to need to do at the end of this if statement is take integer and mod equal a thousand. Now you can make another variable if you want, if you want to save, because remember this is the original number that they typed in and I'm permanently modifying it. So you might not want to do that, but I'm going to do that in this tutorial. I mean, why not? So you can make this a different variable if you want and make it equal to integer mod 1000 if you wish. But I'm just going to permanently modify it. Ah, excuse me. Okay, so now integer is equal. So all integer will be equal to is just this part now. So now we can look at the hundreds place. So if integer is greater than or equal to 100. So now this is the next part. Now we're going to have a whole bunch of interesting stuff going on here. So the first thing I want to do is piece will be equal to and then integer. So instead of integer divided by 1,000, we'll just do in integer divided by 100. So now we'll be given whatever, whoops, whatever number is in the hundreds place. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. If you remember, uh, I'm going to use the I's and V's, and you know what, I'll open this up. Uh, you remember how like 4 is equal to 1, 5? You know, the IV, which is 1, 5, it basically means take 1 away from 5, and, and, and uh, it basically worked the same way with 9. 9 would be 1 take away from 10, kind of like that. Well, likewise with this, uh, when you're looking at these numbers, 900 will be equal to 100 take away from 1,000 and 400 will be equal to 100 take away from 500. So just remember all of those kind of rules. So now we're going to have to go through all of those rules to make sure that we don't mess anything up. So the very first thing we'll look at is to see if it's at least uh, 9. So if piece, so let's say if piece is equal to 9, then all we needed to do is take Roman and concatenate to it. Actually, this time we're not going to be concatenating a character because it's going to have two letters in there, so it's got to be a string. And what was that going to be? Uh, CM? CM's uh, 900, right? So that should work. 
and well that's all it's going to do and then we're going to have an else if now this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky because this might confuse you uh, if and what I'm going to do is if peace is greater than or equal to five so yeah this would be a little bit confusing what we're going to first do is let's look at this because I want to show you this is going to be a long tutorial but uh, let's look at this if we if we have at least 500 we know there's going to be a D there if it's greater than 5 but obviously not equal to 9 otherwise it would have gone into this if statement uh, then all we can do is check for 6, 7, and 8 as well well what's the difference between 5, 6, 7, and 8 the difference is D DM DMM DMMM so you can kind of guess what we're going to be doing. We'll have a loop in there, but the very first thing we're going to do is type out Roman plus equals then the character D because we know there's going to be a D in there if it's at least equal to 5. Then after this, we're going to have a for loop. Now this is going to be a bit more of an interesting for loop. So I have int i is equal to 0, but can we just put in i is less than equal to peace? No, because peace is going to be you know, equal to either 5, 6, 7, or 8. So how do we solve this? Well, let's just take away 5. So if we take away 5, so that means we know if it's going to be exactly 500, uh, then piece, which is 5, minus 5 will equal 0. So 0 won't be less than 0, so if it's 500, if we were to type that in, we won't have to worry about more M, or, is that M? No, C's. C's being concatenated onto it, uh, then, did I do that? Did I go D M M M in my thing? I'm sorry, I meant D C C C. I'm sorry. But yeah, well we can concatenating C's on there because that's the one hundreds. And then we'll have I plus plus. So first we'll add on the D, then for every basically what this will do is check to see for every number higher than M, then concatenate a uh, a C on there. I'm so glad I didn't make this mistake with my code. I would have been really embarrassed. Then, uh, well, uh, that's about it with that. So that's for this else if. Now we're going to need another else if. And what this else if will do is to check. We can't just go else because it might check if it's equal to zero. It, it shouldn't, though, because it's, it's going to be at least a one with this parent if statement. But it makes me more comfortable doing else if anyways. So if, oh, wait, no, there's actually one more I forgot. And that's if it's equal to four. Sorry, I jumped the gun there. So if it's equal to 4, this will be another straight up one with a 9. So it will be Roman plus equals a string this time. But instead of 100 take away 1,000, it's going to be 100 take away 500. And that's going to be the 400 that we want. Then we're going to have our last else if. And what this one will do is check to see if piece is greater than or equal to 1. So if it is, if it's at least one, then of course we're going to have our trusty for loop. And we'll have int i is equal to zero, while i is less than piece. Since we, only, since we know piece can only be at this point, one, two, or three, because if it's greater than three, it's going to go into one of these right here. Uh, so it will only be up to three. And well, in this for loop, all we have to do is type out Roman and concatenate the string 100, which is just C. And that's it for the last else if. I don't. I didn't want to make this an else because I don't. I don't know. It could always mess up. I don't know. Uh, it makes me more comfortable. So at the very end of this, remember if integer was at least greater than or equal to 100. Uh, once we're done figuring all this out, we would like to take just like we did here, integer mod 1,000. This time we're going to take integer and mod 100 from it. So now, at this point, when we mod 100, so let's copy this right here. So I'm going to copy, and let's go down here. All we're going to get left here is the 286, but then when we mod 100, we're just going to get the remainder, 86. So if we, that's just, that's just the example I'm doing there, but. So now we're going to pretend that we're just dealing with 86 here for an example. So time for our next if statement such a big program so if integer is greater than 10 basically so if it's at least or greater than or equal to 10 whoops my bad 
Did I do greater than or equal here? Yes, I did. So greater than or equal to 10. Now it's time for some more if statements again. So we'll do if. Actually, was there one more thing I was supposed to do? Oh, I'm sorry, piece. So now, since we're dealing with this, now we're gonna have piece is equal to, and basically it'll be integer divided by 10. So now piece will be, well, whatever's in the tenths place, which will be this eight right here, and that's what we wanna deal with. So, okay, there we go. Now let's go into this first if statement and check to see if piece is equal to nine. And if it's equal to nine, of course, Roman plus equals, and whatever 90 is, which is actually going to be a string, not a character. And what is 90? I think that's XC, right? So 100, so 10 take away 100 is XC. So, yep, XC will be for 90. Then, uh, I'm already forgetting how to, uh, I'm already losing this out of my mind. Okay, so that's all we do there. Sorry, this is a really long application. You probably got to agree with me. So here, we're going to do the same trick. If its piece is greater than or equal to 5, then since we already know that it's going to be at least 50, because it's looking to see if there's at least a 5 there, we know an L, because that's what the 50 is, an L, that's the 5 right there, uh, will be present. So we'll go Roman, concatenate, and then we'll concatenate an L there. Then after all of this, we can have our trusty for loop once again, and then we can throw in, let's say, uh, int i is equal to zero, while i is less than uh, piece minus five, and then i plus plus, and then in this loop, we'll have Roman plus equals 10, which is our little x right here. So that's really, really nice. And I believe that's all I wanted to do on that one. Now I'm looking at my previous code to make sure I did it. I'm doing it the same way. Okay, so now next is the four. So I'll just type out if again. There we go. Then if piece is equal to four. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Then we're going to want to concatenate plus equals. I'm doing this in my head too, by the way. That's why I keep looking up to make sure I'm doing it the same way. Uh, I'm... I can't, you know, but don't worry. When I was when I was uh, earlier, younger at programming and stuff, this kind of stuff was completely overwhelming. But I just, I still just came off my object-oriented programming stuff. So this is actually still very easy for me. So piece is equal to four. So what is that going to be? Or four is forty. So that's x xl. Uh, forty is xl. So ten take away fifty, or basically fifty take away ten. Uh, so that's that's forty right there. And then, uh, then we're gonna have, is that an L, an if there? What was I thinking? That could go completely have messed me up. Holy mackerel! Yeah, make sure you put that to an else if there. You don't want you you definitely don't want that. That's gonna be a major problem. So else if then basically if piece is greater than or equal to one. So if it's greater than or equal to one, then we know. Whoa, it's just gonna be a for loop, right? Yeah, all I did for that one was just a for loop. So, so for int i is equal to zero, and i is less than strictly piece because it can only be one, two, or three at this point. Increment i by up by a one, and then we'll have Roman plus equals the the character. We can just do a character this time, and the character was ten. So it's either going to act uh, add on ten, twenty, or thirty. So 1x, 2x, or 3x's. Then, like we did before, now that we're done with the tens place, we can now completely mod this by 10 now, right? So I'll go down here. So after all these if statements, uh, but bear in mind that integer was still greater than or equal to 10, we can take uh, we can take our number integer and mod it by 10. Then when we oh mod equal oh oh did I put mod equal up here? Oh my goodness. See, look at that. This is such a long application. I'm making mistakes here. That's bad on my part. So now that we're done, now that we take an integer mod equal 10, now all we're going to see is the remainder of 86 divided by 10, which is just the 6. So now we'll go all the way down here now and look to see what we'd do if we only had 6. Or, or any number, really. So just the ones place. Ah, oh, so we're now finally down to our last set of if statements, and I believe everything will work at that point. So if 
so, because they can still have a zero at the very end, like 300 or something. So if integer is greater than or equal to 1, right? Yeah, 1. So basically, if it's at least 1, then at this point, we'll set piece equal to, and then integer, and is this necessary? Oh, no, it's actually not necessary. Piece, piece is going to be equal to integer. Basically, it's just integer at this point, because we don't need to divide it by 1. It's just whatever. So now we'll set piece equal to integer, and we're going to have our last if statements now. So if piece is equal to 9, then uh, basically we just go Roman plus equals the string. Uh, so what's the string uh, for 9? That's ix, right? So 1 take away 10. Uh, so that's it with that one. Then we'll have an else if. And then we'll have a piece is greater than or equal to 5, so at least 5, but not 9, of course. Then we're going to have a Roman, and then we're going to tack on the string V, because we know at least 5 will be there. So, oh, that's the first time we're seeing V, I believe. And then we'll have a for loop. And then we'll throw in int i is equal to 0, and while i is less than piece minus 5, and then i plus plus, uh, for every number above 5, we'll tack on the character, whoops, we'll tack on the character i. So, if, you know, if it's 6, we'll have a vi, if it's 7, vii, if it's 8, we'll have viii. So that'll all work out, and that's, again, that's all I did there, right? Yeah, okay, so now next is the 4. So let's go else if, if it's equal to 4. So piece is equal to 4, and if it is, we'll go Roman concatenate the string IV, which is 1 take away 5, and that's the 4. Then our very last if statement. Oh my goodness, I bet you're all glad to be here by now. So if piece is greater than or equal to 1, and at this point, all we're going to have is a for loop. So we'll have piece is greater than or equal to 1. Did I do that one up there? Okay, yes, I did. And as long as it's greater than or equal to 1. Um, did I have a mistake here? Why is it? I don't know. So, okay, so piece, well, piece is greater than or equal to 1. Um, oh, no, wait, no, that's, that's not what I'm supposed to do in a for loop. See, I'm so tired right now. Int i is equal to 0, and i is less than piece i plus plus. See, the b greater than or equal to 1, that was up there. So, okay, so now we have our for loop, and, well, all we're going to do at this point is just tack on uh, i's, which is just the 1's. And that is it, folks. This is it. This little thing right here, this little nugget, will go through this perfectly and convert anything you want into a Roman numeral. So let's test this sucker out. So as you can see, we got no warnings or errors, so that's a good thing. And let's go on this little website that I found here. So what should we convert first? Let's convert, let's say, uh, 467. So that's 467. So let's see what happens if I type in 467. CDL, CDL, XVII. So it worked. That's really, really, really cool. Let's throw in, I don't know, um, 2954. So 29, that's going to give us a quite a little interesting thing there. So let's go into Visual Studio again and run this. And then let me minimize this again. So we'll go... Uh, 2954, is that what I typed in? Oh, I should have typed that in. I don't remember what I typed in. MMCM, MMCM, LIV, LIV. And there you go, it still works. So should, should I do any more? Should I do like a... Let's, let's just throw in 9. Let's just throw in 9. See if this one is foolproof. If we just type in a simple number. Because I've been doing simple numbers, or complicated numbers. But what if I just type in a simple number like 9? And it still works, just completely simple so so yeah that's about it for this project i hope this was useful for you uh, i've seen lot lots of places on forums and stuff i don't actually go on forums i just read what other people do i don't actually register i just see what people do uh, and talk about but 
Um, this is probably the easiest formula right here. I've seen other formulas that people have done, but uh, they're very messy. I think this is probably the this is this is probably the easiest one to read to see what is going on, and that's why I did it this way. Uh, I know this isn't the most efficient way to do this code, but this is how I wanted you to see it done so you can see it very visually. And yeah, that's about it. So I hope this project was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.